What's your name and what do you do? I'm Steven Fearberg and I'm a cinematographer or a director of photography, depending on what people like to say. What introduced you to filmmaking? What, what, what was it that inspired you and said, uh, this is what I want to do? You're a kid from Detroit. I didn't know anybody in any artistic field at all in Detroit. I mean, everyone was, wanted to be an automotive engineer or an automotive executive or something. The idea of going to the film industry seemed crazy. I was just throwing my life away. But I, I signed up for an engineering major and I, I got an advisor, engineering advisor, the day before school started. And I, I walk in his office to meet him and he goes, what are you doing here? And I go, well, I'm, you're my advisor. And he goes, why? And I go, well, I'm, I might be an engineering major. And he goes, no. He goes, come here. And he takes me out in the hallway and he shows me like four guys down the hall with like pocket protectors and all this stuff, what you would expect of it. And he goes, those are engineers. He goes, you're much too interesting to be an engineer. You can't be one. And he kicked me out of his office. And this guy like saw immediately, this guy I'd never met, he saw who I was in a way that everybody I knew in Detroit for some reason couldn't see. A graduate student took me on a documentary they make about the Chinese New Year. And we were waiting for the parade to start. I saw something going on on the street and I went down and I looked at it and there was a big Panavision camera there. And Turns out Francis Ford Coppola was filming the conversation. And Gene Hackman was there, and I caught his eye, and he looked at me like I belonged on the same earth as him. And I went back, and I thought, if I was 40 years old, and I was working as a lawyer, doctor, whatever, and things, if I worked on the street and ran into people filming, and I went, I never even tried to do it, I couldn't live with myself. And so that moment, I said, that's it. I'm going for it. So you have this sort of documentary, you've had a, a past, but then also you're big into steady cams and these very intricate moves, so it's a little dichotomy inside of you there. Uh, on point. Entourage? Yes, absolutely. But now when we go to the affair, that is no documentary feel. You have handheld shots here and there, but that is, to me, a very beautiful type of light. It's got a darkness to it. It kind of almost has a little bit of a brooding nature, but then at times you have all this pool light, which I love. It's great. You weren't pigeonholed for that. No, I love that you're saying that. I love that you're saying that. Because, no, I, don't, I would have no intention of the affair looking like Entourage. First he was a writer, then he was a blogger, and now he's waiting on tables in a story. <laughs> I shit you not. I like the idea, like what I was saying, is that Berlucci said, he's like, just start from scratch. Like, what could this movie look like? What should it look like? What does the script tell me it should become? That's where I'm starting. I, re I, I really need to read the script and then try to let it somehow fill me. And then hopefully it gives me a good idea about how it should then feel. Christy. Marshall Hershkovitz, who's a partner of Ed Zwick, when I was doing Love and Other Drugs, he said, you do heightened reality. And I think that's, that's something that I actually aspired to. And I, in general, what I try to do is something that tends to be fairly naturalistic. It looks like you're really in that place and it gives, can give weight to the performances. Whereas if you light something that's in a very beautiful but stylistic way, it makes them more aware of the fact that you're, you're watching an artifice, which is the movie, because the lighting is, even though it's beautiful, is not something you would normally see. Vince, we got a big problem here. Mm. We have no problems. Life is good. On the uh, TV show Entourage, one of the things I did very consciously is I said I'm not backlighting these actors because they're already too damn good looking. We've got all these 20 year olds who are like beautiful. And if you glamorize them, it's going to make the audience throw up and they're going to hate these characters. And I was very upfront about the fact. I said, no, I'm not going to glamorize them. I'm going to make them look like you just saw them on the street or you went into a restaurant and that's what they would look like. And I think that gave the show in some way a gravitas that it wouldn't have had if I hadn't done that. To the sale of Josh's company. I can't believe, number one, that I, I came from Detroit and actually made a life in the film industry. Like, we're there working, I go, somehow this is a job? Because it's so much fun. 
And I just was doing this low budget film in New York and most people working on it for free or almost free because they love it. What a wonderful thing that we, we love our job, that we love doing it.